Good morning, everyone. So it's time for another range test. Um, I love doing these, and uh, yeah, you've probably noticed that most of the videos have been pulse star range tests so far. But today I'm going to do the first of what is going to be my standard range test, I've decided, um, that hopefully I'll be able to do with other cars as well in the future. We're hoping to replace our Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV with uh, another electric car uh, a little bit later in the, in the summer, and uh, I'll be able to then do the same range test. So the idea today is I'm going to drive... Um, it's about 20 minutes, 17 miles from where I live to Gatwick Airport, which is um, where I often have to go to for work. So it kind of represents what I feel to be um, a standard commute for me to work and back. It's not very far, it's only 17 miles each way. But the key thing is, it is on the same road that um, is, is going to allow me to drive at quite a, a reasonable speed. So it's the A23 all the way up to the N M23. There's only a short section where I have to slow down. So it represents quite a good um, test for driving at 70 miles an hour on a motorway, but on a fairly short journey. Now, the, the thing today that I want to emphasize in this video is the temperature is quite cold for the south of England. It's actually snowing a little bit. Um, the temperature is just zero degrees. And uh, I think it's a little bit lower, actually, in, in areas around Sussex. Um, I've seen sort of minus two, minus three. So it represents a nice cold temperature. I've preconditioned the car for 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to drive with the temperature set to 20 degrees. And um, I am not wearing a, a thick jacket at the moment. I'm just wearing a normal fleece. So it kind of represents like how I like to go out and drive and stay nice and comfortable. I don't drive with the heat off and a really thick jacket and, and scarf on. I find that kind of uh, annoying. I know some people like to do that to extend their range, but um, this is going to be like just a, a comfort style test. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this test today, and then tomorrow I'm, I'm going to Volvo for the latest software update. Now, once that's done, I'm going to then try and do the test exactly the same time of day on Friday morning, where the temperatures forecast to be basically the same. So what I wanted to do is to see if there has been any improvement in the range display, the actual consumption. Um, a, few, a few different people have reported slightly different things from what they've seen with their um, software update, but also Polestar have um, apparently done some tweaks to range, which I think is actually more of a display thing. But what will be interesting to see is to do this exact same drive today and Friday morning, and then uh, try and compare temperature and see how it goes. Now, the car's been sitting overnight. I I didn't drive it yesterday. No, I did. I, I had to go to work and back. That's all I did. So I got back home at three o'clock. I haven't used the car since, and I've done 30 minutes of preconditioning. Um, also in this test, I am going to try and measure the road noise um, with a decibel meter on the way up to Gatwick, and that will be something I can add into this test in the future with other cars as well. So yeah, no more talking. Let's get going, and we'll see what happens on this uh, range test today. So we are departing with 79% uh, battery and I'm just going to make sure we uh, yeah, click to reset the trip computer there, get that nice and clear. So we're going to use trip manual because I've reset that as we're ready to go. And uh, yeah, one thing that I also want to point out is this uh, regen limitation. So have a look at this. You can see here the grayed out area showing um, basically no regen is available. So that's a combination of being at a fairly high battery percentage, 79%, and also a low battery temperature. The two things... Uh, will make it even more difficult to do regen. So say, for example, you're lower at, say, 70% battery, you might get some regen, but the cold temperature makes that worse. So the two combined together, at the moment, we can get no regen at all. Okay, so just so you can see my settings here on the screen, I've got uh, temperature set to 20. I've got low on the heated seat and the steering wheel. I might turn the heated seat off because I actually find that a little hot sometimes. So let's uh, have a look. Um, actually, let's go to the main page. I've got a low one pedal drive set. That's um, how I've been driving mainly at the moment because I find that to be a good um, balance between comfort and regeneration. So let's have a look on the map here. We're going to, um, to select... Uh, yeah, McDonald's, Gatwick South Terminal. And uh, that is coming up on the display as 21 minutes, 67% on arrival and 17 miles of total driving. Okay, yeah, let's head off.
Okay, so we've arrived at uh, McDonald's at Gatwick South Terminal. Good place to uh, to do this test to because I can craft something to eat as well, some breakfast. Um, yeah, we arrived with 44 kilowatt hours per 100 miles on the display, 33.9 ticked over to 44. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset that and then we'll measure the drive on the way back as well. And that will eliminate this little section here in the car park because what happens is if you just, if you just park and then you press the P button, it will, um, it will keep counting up and uh, I don't really want it to do that. So what I'd like to do is measure the drive here and then measure the drive back um, and not uh, run the risk of making any mistakes of uh, taking into account being sat in the car park, uh, which is, is going to bias the test a little bit. I don't really want to do that. So yeah, 44 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, which is quite high consumption. Um, we arrived with 68%, it said, and we expected 67. So it was, was 1% better. Um, temperature here is minus one degree. So it is quite cold. I'm not going to stay here very long. I'm going to stay here for maybe five minutes. I'm going to keep the car warm and then I'm going to head back. So yeah, um, and we'll see what happens on the total drive. Just before we head back, I want to show you something on Google Maps that I find really useful. I haven't actually had to use this very much lately because I tend to plan my charging in advance, but um, it has a really good feature to show you uh, available chargers and uh, the information on what kind of charging speed you can expect. So yeah, have a look at uh, this on Google Maps. So one of the ways you can get to this is by pressing this button at the bottom and then select what looks like an electrical or fuel pump thing with a, a power socket on the end and it will show you a, a list of available charging points so this is where I am right here at Gatwick Airport and uh, it shows one two three and on this side it'll give you some information on charging speed so this says uh, here we go pod point charger the closest one is this one here and it tells you that it's a 22 kilowatt three phase charge it doesn't say three phase but that's what a 22 kilowatt charger would be and then if you go back if you look for fast here click on that one it tells you that that's at the Holiday Inn and it uh, tells you it's 50 kilowatts uh, fast charger available there. And if you then go back, another thing you can do is you can scroll on this side. If you go down, it will then show you other options. So if you were looking specifically for fast chargers, you could then click on this one, for example, here. And uh, it shows you that um, there's another fast charger there and then I'll show you that one there so another fast charger there's quite a lot around the Crawley Gatwick area which is nice um, and you can you can see here so this one for example is uh, we've got uh, a type 2 22 kilowatt there and a slow and it also shows you this is, is availability I believe um, so it's showing on this one that uh, this one is not available um, the other ones that are. So yeah, really useful feature in uh, Google Maps that might not be that obvious if you haven't actually um, had the opportunity to fiddle around with these kinds of things. Also, when you get down to a low battery percentage, it will uh, suggest charges for you. And uh, if you try and navigate somewhere that you can't make, so let's, let's try this, for example, let's try and navigate to uh, Edinburgh. It will calculate that for you and then it will say your time zero percent and you can add a charging stop and it will it will start to give you different it gives you a bunch of different options there but basically it's saying here stop at ionity uh, with 14 percent and it, it would sort of break the journey down for you now i don't know if it's um i probably wouldn't set off with that kind of journey in mind i think i would plan it on something like uh a better route planner or maybe using a zap map and pick the, the places I want to stop rather than let this do it but it's there for you um, to to help you out if you you don't want to do that and you just want to use the, the Google Maps Okay, so we're back from the drive now, and uh, yeah, 
it was uh, snowing a bit on the way back, which, you know, like if you're in uh, Sweden or Norway or Finland, then you'll laugh at this. But we don't get very much snow down in uh, Sussex in the south of England. Like seeing temperatures of zero minus two is, is kind of unusual. Overnight, maybe in the winter, but yeah, we, we don't get very much snow here. So it's kind of unusual to see any snow at all. So yeah, temperature stayed around zero to minus one the whole, the whole drive. And uh, yeah, consumption was better on the way back. So I'll go through that in a second. But one thing that I wanted to test on this video that I'm going to try and do in other videos is uh, a uh, noise test while driving on the motorway. So I have a decibel meter that I, I use um, for um, calibrating my home theatre system. Um, and uh, I decided I would check that with my phone. I've got a decibel meter on my phone. And actually the one on the phone is seems to be very similar. So I'm just going to use that for these tests because it lets me do a screen capture. And uh, yeah, basically driving at 70 miles an hour on the motorway, it was averaging at about 66 uh, decibels so yeah that um you can see that on the screen it's got an average chart there um 66 so i don't really know what to compare that to because it's the first one i've done so when i i drive other cars hopefully on this route i'll be able to compare that and i'll put that into the spreadsheet as well so in terms of range and consumption what do we get okay you can see here on on the screen that we arrived with and i'm just opening up my notes again we arrived with uh, obviously a better consumption on the way back and it was uh, 39 on the way back with uh let's see we arrived with 58 percent battery so we used 11 percent on the way back 12 percent on the way out slightly better consumption on the way back now in terms of elevation change yeah there is a little bit of a change but um the main factor i think in this will be actually battery temperature and warming up so preconditioning in the car the car is all very well in the morning but the pulsar does not preheat the battery so uh that is something that I would like to see Polestar add in the future because I think that would really help with consumption if you were able to warm the battery because one thing that you lose is the ability to regen. So again, if you want to be the most efficient as you possibly can and you don't need all that battery um, power, then maybe charge to 70% and get yourself regening earlier on because by charging to 80% with a cold battery, the regen is limited to nothing. So you just lose energy through the brakes for the first portion of the journey. Um, so I think that's the main reason why consumption is better on the way back than, um, than elevation or wind today, because actually not much wind at all. But that averaged out to 41.5 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Now, that's, um, that's not great in terms of consumption. Um, there's no doubt about that. And that would give you a theoretical maximum range of 174 miles. Now, there's something to bear in mind. If this was a longer drive, it would improve because once the battery is up to temperature, then you rarely start to get those benefits of improved range. So if you're going to be driving further than this um, on your commute, then I think you're going to get a slightly better total range. But 174 is, is the theoretical range uh, on this kind of a trip with the Polestar. And it works out as 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which is, uh, sorry, 2.4 actually, I think, is not, um, again, it's not very efficient. If you are looking at, say, a Kia e-Nero, maybe a, a Kona, something like that, you'll probably get better efficiency but bear in mind, this is a 400 horsepower car. Um, those are not. So it's, it's like it's like comparing a BMW, you know, 320D with a 335D. It, it, it's, a, it's a very different vehicle. Um, but yeah, if, if supreme efficiency is what you're looking for, then Polestar, no, is not, is not the one to go for. Um, but it's great for driving. It's comfortable and it's it's really nice car to be in. So you could do this trip five times. Basically, this is a 34 mile round trip. You could do this trip five times um, and have a little bit of battery left at the end. So in theory, you could do this Monday to Friday and then only charge on the weekends if you wanted to. But again, most people, um, I, I imagine, who are looking at a Polestar are probably going to be able to charge at home. Maybe you can charge at work, so it won't be so much of an issue. Well, hopefully this range test has been useful. This will be the first of um, the series of styles of range tests, and I'm going to hopefully be able to do this particular drive um, with other cars if I can uh, convince some of the, uh, the manufacturers to let me borrow some of their cars as well as whatever we choose to get in the summer. So yeah, if you could uh, please subscribe down below and uh, like, comment. Great to hear people's thoughts. And uh, I will be back again with another video very soon. Thank you.